Okay, so <clears throat> the session the session is uh, let's make uh, D dotto issue picking easier, um, uh, otherwise known as uh, people want to help and they don't know what to do, and this is based off of uh, several combinations of uh, old wisdom and other talks uh, by Zen Doodles and XJM. So that's. I'm YesCT. I'm Kathy Thays. Um, I'm YesCT on Twitter, so you can uh, tweet questions and follow-up thoughts at me. I work for Black Mesh. Uh, they pay me to go to Drupal events, organize sprints, and work on core issues. Um, I mentor in IRC at the core office hours regularly. Uh, I plan sprints. I plan the Friday sprint, which you all should come to and uh, helped organize the extended sprints, which you're invited to. And I also work on issues, and uh, my favorite issues to work on are the multilingual ones. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about the experience that new people have for picking an issue or what options they have for how to know what issues to do. and. Uh, and then show some of the things that we're trying to do to overcome that and make that process better. And then we're going to discuss some ideas uh, that you have for what we can do to improve that experience for people. Uh, so this is a core conversation. And uh, that means that uh, the presentation part is going to be short and there's going to be a lot of discussion. So first, uh, some context. Um, Webchick has this great talk that was recorded uh, in Sydney. And uh, there's a particular section of it that I really like a lot that explains how the issue queue works. Um, and the issue queues are really important to us. And that's how we get things done. Um, we're going to talk about how people pick issues to work on and the work that they do are various ways of contributing and contributing can mean a lot of different things like evaluating an idea and giving feedback uh, it can be reviewing a patch or a UX design it can be uh, reading an issue summarizing things updating the issue summary manual testing um, it can mean a lot of different things sometimes it means uploading a patch to an issue uh, in general, uh, I really want people to have a good first experience contributing so that they do it more than once. And we don't have a lot of good numbers for how often people contribute, but we do have numbers for how often people, um, how many mentions people have when they worked on a patch and it got committed. So that's not the same thing as the amount of work they did, right? But it's what we have numbers for. So um, Drupal Cores is one way of looking at that information. It analyzes the commit messages that get on issues that are fixed. And there are about uh, 2,070 people who have commit mentions in Drupal 8 right now. And about half of them have only one mention. That doesn't mean they've only attempted to contribute once. Right? They probably contributed a lot more than once because you have to contribute quite often in order to get a, to get something committed, right? Yeah, they had, to, they had something has already come to fruition, right? It probably also means that they have several in the pipeline that could be committed by the time Drupal it gets released too. Um, but anyway, we've got these numbers: this two thousand and about half are at one, right? Trouble is, is um, even to get that far, you have to figure out which issue is a good match for you, something that you are interested in, you have a good skill set uh, that needs you, and that is of an important enough priority that other people will review your work and take it all the way to getting done. And so finding issues like that is really difficult. Even if you find one like that, finding another one can also be difficult because clearly we have all these people who have won, 
right? We don't have all of them at two. Um, so we typically give people advice if they can if they can have contact with somebody else in the community. We give them advice, like try and pick a novice issue. Uh, don't pick things that are too old, and don't pick things that are too new. Uh, and look at the status and issues at, maybe try and pick something that's at needs work or needs review, because at least work has been started, there's something there to go off of, right? So already, when somebody wants to get involved and contribute, we already have to give them advice for how to get started. Um, it's important that, um, that they have a good first experience, that their work gets review or feedback uh, in order to, for them to gain some of the benefit of even putting all that work into an issue, right? The benefit is that they get review, that they get feedback, that they develop their skills, that they learn something more, right? And that the issue goes to actually getting fixed, and that also requires review. We really want those first experiences to have that success of getting feedback. Um, and we have different ways of helping people do that. Uh, we have a novice tag. Um, we have initiatives or people that are working together in groups. Uh, we have these focus boards that we use. We have tags. We tell people at sprints to pair up. And we have meta issues. We have all these like things that we try and do. And then when people want to get involved, we have to explain the things to them. And they have to know that they have all these options of ways to finding issues. And it's all just a lot. Um, one thing that doesn't really have to be explained to them, one entry point is if they know they have a dashboard, right? If they make an account, if they know they have a dashboard and they go to it, they might see this thing, this contributor links um, block on their dashboard. Um, and they might see this link that says, we have a lot of novice issues. I don't know that that's directly obvious that that's what they should do though. Um, and I don't know exactly what that links to, but it probably doesn't link to issues that are at all targeted toward that person or that even have that criteria, right, that we recommend, right, the not too old, not too new, and, you know, has certain statuses that might give them a leg up, right? So this is one entry point. If they go to the issue queue um, and if they go to the advanced search, then this is how they can weed down the funnel of just all of the issues in existence down to something that might work for them. But they don't even know to do this, right? Um, but what they can do is make sure they're looking at core, if they want to get involved, pick whatever project, right? Um, and look for things that need work, need review, pick the version of things that you're interested in, um, and then to really filter things down, you have to know about this tags thing. And you have to notice that the select has to be set to is all of, not because otherwise you just get more issues. Um, and really the best way for people to do this thing is to pick novice and then pick another category that gets them something that they're interested in. So I'm really interested in multilingual, right? So I would pick novice and DAMI. How do you know that the tag is D8MI, right? It's not, it doesn't say multilingual, right? What would you even type there? How do you even know that you're supposed to put a topic there? There's nothing. Um, so there are other entry points besides that dashboard novice link. You could instead read about some awesome work that's being done and, and see a tweet or, um, see somebody write a blog post, and in those communications, they might link to like the, the groups page, right? So like a focus board or a blog post, or we have the multilingual site, right? Um, there's, uh, do we, did I take that picture out? No, so they might go to um, look at what's going on with CORE and eventually find that we have initiatives, and those initiatives might link to a site, and then that site will link to uh, the, a list of issues using that tag. So this is how to discover the tag, right? Like if I, if I were interested in working on multilingual, I might read a multilingual blog post or see a tweet or something, which might land me... Uh, where, I don't know where it is. Might land me here, but on the front page of this site, okay? So 
it takes me to the multilingual uh, website, and then I might be like, oh, focus issues. And then I would go here, and I would see like issues, right? And then on this page is a link that goes to the actual advanced search, and that's how I could discover the tag. So I'd have to go through those steps. Another way of discovering um, tags or topics or the words that we use to describe things or issues that are related is to find any issue at all, right? Maybe by Googling or something that, and then to look at tags that are already on an issue and be like, oh, that's how people are categorizing things. So if you find an issue that you are interested in, then you, have, then you can see, oh, look, something DAMI. You still aren't going to know what DAMI means. Um, right? Or configuration system. Right? That one's a little bit more discoverable. So we can come in through the novice in the dashboard, or we can come in like through a blog post that links to a group's site. And then that group's site links to an advanced search, which includes the tag that that group uses. Um, <laughs> you could also hang out in IRC and see how other people find things, right? Um, so some people, me, uh, use factoids, and uh, this is how I keep track of things. Um, so there's a robot that lives in IRC, and it knows things, right? So sometimes when I have a question, I ask the robot, and it gives me the answer. Okay, uh, there are a lot of groups that have uh, focus boards. Uh, these are um, sometimes made with a project called Rocket Ship. Uh, it's drupal.org slash project slash rocket ship, I think, works. Yeah, but it's, I think it still has a namespace. I don't. They don't? Whatever. It's called Rocket Ship. You can Google it because Google Rocket Ship Drupal and that will work. <laughs> it is very helpful. I thought it did. Okay, the trouble with the rocket ship uh, focus board things um, is they break when Drupal.org changes, um, and it's a screen scraping thing, um, mostly because there's no API for Drupal.org. There's an issue, a JSON issue, and this is issue number uh, 1710850. Please. So someone at Drupal Wait, this is this is Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan. Um, somebody's actually trying to make rocket ship on Drupal.org at this DrupalCon. Good. Is there an issue for that? I don't know what it is, but it's probably in the rocket ship issue queue. No, I looked. I looked this oh, morning. I, and I couldn't find it. Can somebody find it and look it look it up, please? All right. Let's let's see if we can find that. Okay. Because I thought that there was, and I I couldn't find the issue. Good, find it. See what I mean? It's hard to find issues. All right, <clears throat> yeah, so let's see if we can, if we can find that. Um, it will be easier for groups to provide ways of onboarding people when we can get this fixed, though. So that will help a little bit. Okay. Right, so Boyan is asking if uh, if fixing the JSON thing and allowing groups to like organize their stuff uh, helps with onboarding or helps with organizing, uh, and Jess said both. Um, th so there's kind of ways that people find issues. There's more ways that people find issues. Um, they could be having a problem. They could run into a bug. Uh, so let's say you're trying out Drupal 8 for the first time, and you are looking in an admin table, it's a really long table, and you scroll it, and the header on the table floats into the middle of your table, uh, and that, that annoys you, because you can't do what you were doing, and you notice that that's a bug. And so you do a Google search, you know, floating header, something, something, right? And you, oh, look, there's an issue um, that's your pain point. That's actually like our nicest way of somebody finding an issue that they're interested in, <laughs> is that they first find the problem, and then when they Google, they find the issue. Um, because they are interested in it, right? But it may not be good for them as a novice contributor. Uh, um, okay, 
there's and then there's the other way, which is just the general, oh, I want to help with Drupal, and I don't know what to do. So you can either already know a bug that you want to work on, uh, be try and become part of a group that's working on a certain set of bugs, um, or you can just be lost and just be like, I don't know what to do. So <clears throat> uh, if they're lucky, when they find an issue through any of those ways, um, they it might have an up-to-date issue summary. And that's what they're going to use to try and decide whether or not to work on the issue. So they found an issue, but there's still no like idea for them about whether or not it's a good issue for them and if it's a good uh, first issue for a new contributor. So we, can, uh, we do some things with the issue summary with that. Uh, in general, just having an issue summary template like we have been having for a long time and having it be updated, that's already helps new people evaluate the status of the issue. Um, but we can do better than that. Sorry. Um, in those issue summaries, we can provide links to these. This is a section of the Get Involved um, sidebar documentation area on Drupal.org. And it's relatively high in the list on the sidebar. And it's um, new contributor tasks. And it lists out different categories of contributor tasks. Um, so this is another way people might come in and be able to find things to work on, is they could go to the Get Involved. We have a whole Get Involved section. <laughs> Right? And then they might come here and they might see the contributor tasks and then they might click on one and then go find an issue that has that task that needs to be done. Uh, anyway, so if, if there's an issue and it has an issue summary and somewhere in there it has a link to a contributor task, this helps people identify the issue as one they could work on because it's very easy to identify what needs to be done. And if it, they can't figure out what needs to be done, they can't figure out if they can do it. So we want to identify the things that need to be done on issues. Uh, we have these great contributor task documents. They're superb. Um, they're drupal.org slash contributor dash task slash uh, whatever. Uh, like slash review or slash do accessibility review or all kinds of things. Oh, good. Um, that's good. Um, okay. We have this new thing. Okay, like as a couple of days ago, um, that we people who use the issue queue a lot, they have Dreaditor, hopefully, and um, and they have a there's a button, there's a new button, and it says uh, insert novice tasks. What this does is put a table which has a template which lists the common tasks. It lists like a short um, name for the task and it links off to those great contributor tasks instructions. The good thing about this for us is now y'all don't have to like Google for contributor task reroll or contributor task manual testing or contributor task update issue summary. You have a button right there, you click on it, and it inserts the thing, and you just find the task that you're trying to insert, and you uncomment it, and then you save the issue. So doing that helps people evaluate issues to see if they are good matches for them. Because if the issue says that the things that need to be done are to add automated tests uh, and to make a backport, and that person is not a coder, then they know that is not a good issue for them. And they can move on and look for a different issue. Um, the nice thing about having the button here is this is completely discoverable. Talking about discoverableness, right? Like, I'm going to tell you guys about this, and now you know. But I didn't have to, right? You guys used Redditor. You would have noticed the button eventually and maybe clicked on it to see what would happen. And then you'd be like, hey, what's this? Contributor tests? Oh, that's cool. And why would they be trying to tell me to put them in the issue summary? Maybe that's a good idea. Um, so this is actually, I'm pretty happy with this, actually. This is great because it gives our experienced contributors some discoverable way of making other issues discoverable. Uh, oh, this is what it looks like um, after you save. It looks much nicer than the HTML. Um, so it's kind of organized. It has a 
short name for task. Uh, it identifies which of the tasks are novice issues because not all issues in a novice, not all tasks in a novice issue are novice. So we can explicitly say, this is good for you, new person. These other ones, don't do that. Uh, and then it has the instructions. I like a lot the idea of marking things as done or completed um, because what this does is, is it, it exposes our process to people who don't understand it. When we delete tasks from the remaining tasks section, it's not obvious that they were done. It's only obvious that they don't need to be done, which is there's a difference. Anyway, uh, Jess did this, and she did a good job. We did it together, and we did a good job. Um, thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, so this button is good, right? Because we did it, right? Kotzer did it. The Drenitor people, right? Sun, Mark Carver. Uh, I said we needed it for the sprint, and they said, you know, okay. And like six of us, we made this happen. This is really incredible. And we could do it right now. We didn't need to wait on anybody. We decided it was a good idea, and we did it. But um, there's also the idea that this should be metadata on the actual issue, but it requires changing Drupal.org. And a while ago, um, Drupal.org, we couldn't change it. Um, the, before the migration from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, we didn't want to make any changes because we needed to do the migration first, otherwise we'd never get the migration done. Once we got the migration done, now we could start making changes, but the changes that we needed to do were the super critical ones. And, um, and so we wait, waited for those. And also, after the migration, um, we needed to kind of wait for making working on Drupal.org easier. So providing um, you know, a, a copy of Drupal.org that you can play with, right? A sanitized, truncated uh, you know, version of it. All these things are making it a lot easier to change Drupal.org. And uh, there are documented ways of getting your own copy of Drupal.org. Uh, and it's only going to get easier, because they have great ideas on how to make that easier to do. But it's still hard, though, um, to do this. So we need a stopgap, and we have that. But this is the a long-term vision. Um, and we can do a lot more th with this than we can with markup. Because if we want to know things about you know remaining tasks, and we store that information in markup. Now we have to do screen scraping to get it. If we do this, right, now we can, once we can do the JSON thing, right, we can make all this information available so we can do things with, D.O can do things with it, but other people could do things with this information too. Um, another, right. So I think we should do this for only core first because otherwise we have to convince a lot of people about changing their way they work on their project and it will die. Right, yes. Um, the patch, this patch and this issue. So the issue is 2013222 um, and there are a bunch of screenshots in here when Jess made a mock-up on her version of Drupal.org, a, a sandbox version, not her version. Um, <laughs> and uh, and her her stuff is in, um, let's see, pound comment dash 8260129. Um, the nice thing about having issue tasks like this, um, well, no, that's a side. I'll complain about that some other time. Um, okay, so... New people need to be able to evaluate, need to be able to find an issue they're interested in working on it, and then evaluate whether or not it's a good match for them. Right? Once they find it, they should follow it. This works really well for new contributors because they're following one issue or eight issues. Right? <laughs> they should totally do this. This is great. Sucks for us. Um, uh, so, there's a issue uh, to change this, which has consensus, last time I checked, 
to uh, add a second kind of follow, which is a favorite. And that one is issue 1621714. I think we should totally do that. Uh, we agree. I think there's work already, and we should just we should just do it. Um, okay. So the the difference between follow and favorite. So if my understanding or my imagination of what would happen is there would be two buttons, like a star and a follow button. I don't know if that's actually what's going to happen. If you start it, you would follow it. Like, it would follow it for you. And then when you went to your dashboard or something, you would have two lists available to you, issues that you follow and issues that are your favorite. So follow means that, um, well, you can configure your account to send you notifications for things that you follow. Um, and you may want to get notifications on a lot of things. But you probably don't want to whatever on all of those. You don't want to review them all. You don't want to work on them all. You don't want to uh, be able to share a list of all of those with other people, right? There's, there's this large thing of issues that you kind of want to know about and don't want to lose. But then there are some that are more important for whatever reason to you. Maybe they're actually not your favorites. Maybe they're the ones that you hate and you want to comment every time somebody else does to make sure they don't get done, right? Like, whatever it is. You, the, so you, <laughs> but like each person kind of has at least this idea that there are a lot of things you want to know about and some of them are more important than others. So we're calling it favorite, but it means whatever it means to the person. Now, there are some people who need more um, fine grain splitting up than that, but there are a whole lot of people who this is good enough for them. So I think we should just do it. Um, for people who need more different kinds of lists, uh, there's an idea of having personal tags. So I don't know, some kind of thing where you favorite it, and then there's a drop down, and then you can categorize it. And then now you can have lots of lists uh, of different things. Um, I don't, nobody thinks, there's no consensus on whether or not that's a good idea. Um, but the discussion about whether or not it's a good idea is on issue 2271877. Um, I deal with that right now uh, because Gabor told me to use Gmail labels, and it works pretty good, except I can't share it with anybody. Um, so if I tag issues that I think would be really good for the upcoming Drupal.org um, mentoring sprint, in my Gmail, I can't share that list with anybody. I, I mean, I could write it down, put it in a Google Doc, put it in a blog post, <laughs> give everybody my Gmail credentials, and then just let them have access. So I think this is an interesting thing. I think we could discuss it. I think there could be some advantages. And it's, it's related to the idea that we need to take these lot, ton, a ton of issues. We need to make lists smaller so that they're targeted towards certain people, and then those people need to be able to find those short lists. Um, OK. So yes, I do. So those contributor task documents are so super. Um, and uh, the Hook 42 blog post that Kristen Poole and Amy did on prepping for the sprint on Friday is fantastic. Um, everybody should go read that. Yes, uh, that's Amy. That's Kristen. It was a community thing. There were a lot of people who looked at it, and it built on a lot of information that's been around for a long time that came from a lot of different people, too. Um, uh, so that's super fantastic. Um, w yeah, earlier we were talking about rocket ship. Go ahead. And, um, and we mentioned that um, somebody was actually trying to kind of make that a general purpose thing that existed on Drupal.org, and I think that's a really good, useful thing. It, right now, initiatives are kind of the ones who are making these rocket ship things, but not really initiatives, just groups of people who are coming together and they need a way to organize things. But it's not only good for people who are working on Drupal. It's good for people who are also working on Drupal.org. Uh, it can benefit that team also of being able to have this uh, way of 
visualizing the issues about changing Drupal.org. Okay, so this is Ryan Wheel again, and uh, the issue is called Add a Kanban Style View to Issues Page, and the node ID is 227-8573. So again, 227-8573. Yes, bring the noisy baby in the room, please. No, and everybody smile at the baby and don't worry about the noise. Um, okay, so I'm going to summarize a little bit and then we're going to discuss. So in terms of the action that you all could take to kind of help with this problem, um, you could come to the Drupal Mentoring office hours. Now, why would I tell you to do that? I'm not going to tell you to come to the office hours so that you can help new people so you can experience their pain. You could. <laughs> but those office hours are not just a point at which new people gather to get involved. They're a point at which mentors gather to fix this problem. So we, ha we can go in another channel. It's on everybody's calendar. It's regular meeting. Right? It's people who are interested in this thing. And if you're interested in, in onboarding new people, but you don't actually want to onboard new people, the, they're meeting at the times of the office hours. And if we have more mentors there than are needed to help people in IRC, because we get sometimes, uh, I do like the Monday, what's my Monday evening ones, we, sometimes we get zero people, sometimes we get one, sometimes we get eight. Right? But if there are five mentors who just come. They just come to that time all the time. It, when we're not busy helping new people, we can be busy solving the problem so that we don't have to help new people. Um, so coming to the Drupal Mentoring Office Hours is something you can do when you go back home and you want to help with this. This is where we can, it's like a meeting. It's already scheduled. We can just meet at this time. Um, Drupal dash contribute. You can complain in Drupal dash contribute. You can mention. You can paste links to issues that you're working on, ones that are related to this problem there, and people will see you do that, and then they will start talking to you, and we can start working together on things. Um, you can help with this big problem by working on any Drupal.org novice issue, because the way we're going to fix this problem is not by working on Dreaditor. The way we're going to fix this problem is by working on Drupal.org. But we don't know how to work on Drupal.org. We need, you, I'm, I mean, the people in this room. The, I know, I'm looking out, and I'm seeing 30 experienced contributors and some new ones, right? We need novice issues on Drupal.org because we have to figure out where are the instructions for how to get our own uh, you know, sandbox site. We have to figure out what are the processes that are specific to that. So even though that uh, issue where it puts the needs tasks, the remaining tasks in the metadata is like super complicated and that's what I want solved. That's not where I want you to go to work. I want you to go to work and do one novice Drupal.org issue and then come and work on this really complicated one. Right? I mean, I have experience with this. It's very good to get a successful experience that's easy to do so you can learn all the annoying things before you have to really think hard conceptually about a big overarching problem. So you can actually help with that complicated issue by just working on any DDO issue, novice issue, so that you can build your skills. Uh, come to any sprint. The, the, it's really common now that there are tables of categories of people working on things at sprints, and we have tables that are just working on Drupal.org issues at sprints. And if you're looking for a sprint, uh, it's a really great way of finding them is to go to drupacall.com. It's like tropical, but it's drupacall. Uh, even a palm tree logo icon. And uh, when you're trying to find sprints, your best bet is to look for cons, camps, and sprints. Uh, because it's kind of assumed a lot of times that a camp is going to have a sprint. They don't put in separate events. Uh, the con, right, there's sprints all at the con. There's no sprint event. It's just the con. So when you're looking for sprints, look for those three things, cons, camps, and sprints. Uh, so these are things that you can do that will help with this problem. Um, the node about um, getting this in actual metadata, right? That's 2103222. Uh, more information about the core mentoring stuff is at drupal.org slash core-mentoring. 
uh, please evaluate this session. Um, you find the session, and then you can leave your feedback. Um, and I, yeah, and so that's it. So what we want to do, what I want to do, and hopefully you want to do, is um, discuss these things. So we can go back and look at slides. Uh, I can use the internet and pull up things. Um, so if you have questions, if you disagree, if you have separate ideas, it might be helpful if somebody writes them down. Ryan? Who, yes, you're going to write them down. Who are you? Greg. Greg's, Greg's going to write them down. Uh, so um, when not everybody knows everybody else, so if you ask a question, um, uh, say your name. Oh, right. So or, I'm, I'm Jess. I'm XJM on Drupal.org. Um, and in the very beginning when Kathy was talking about the novice tag and how it doesn't really link to the issues that we want, I kind of wondered actually why it never occurred to me before that we can make that a better view. We can make that a view that is, I mean, the bare, the bare minimum simple thing we can do is it, instead of it being 1,244 issues across everything, we can make it targeted, you know, to, to we have a bunch of core links there. Have, have one that's car targeted to core. Limit the creation date. Limit the comment number is actually the number one thing that I would say. If the issue is over 40 comments long, do not put it in there. That's, that's the kind of thing that we have a whole API for. The, the only thing I think that is difficult about that is that to build that view on Drupal.org, it has to be a search API view, which defeated me actually the last time that I tried to create a Drupal.org view. But um, someone else who has more patience or who has more experience setting up the amazing UI that Search API has could probably do that pretty easily. So if there's someone who's like, I want to make it easier to find novice tasks, you should file that issue to make the right. novice view better that's on the dashboard link and, and tell Kathy and I about it because right. we can give you Yeah, advice. so that I think that's an action item that we can take out of here. This is clearly something that needs to be done. Uh, and what we need to do is uh, open the issue um, and then... Um, I can tweet out the issue. Uh, and we'll tweet it out from Drupal Mentoring, too. Um, so you can follow me, SCT, or you can follow Drupal Mentoring, um, and we'll let people know that way. Oh, and we could also put it in the comments section on the talk on the Khan website. Oh. Yeah, that would be good. And then, so I have, I have three things. Good. And the second thing, the second thing that I thought of, like, right away then is that, um, so, so the, the, the fact that people don't know, like when you were saying, I don't know what to choose two tags and search for them together. I don't know how to find, like I have to go out to the contributor tasks document and then it gives me some instructions and then I go back in and how do I go through that process? So it's, it's what, when you go to a website, people have these like, these like goal oriented links. Like you would say, um, I want to try creating a new patch on like a novice, a novice landing page or some area. When you click novice, it could take you to more than a view that says, I want to try creating a new patch. You click that and it gives you only the active issues that are actionable for patches. Or you could say, I want to try testing something and, and then it gives you a link to the needs manual testing ones. And again, the contributor tasks document for that is there. So that, so that is the new, that is the contributor tasks page. So you might be saying that, so we have another option for that novice link on the dashboard or something, which is not to take people to issues. Well, where the heck is it? I think it should do both. I mean, think about when you, when you want, when you look for information. This one, here. So this page, right, yeah. if you land here, what this page is, it's, I'm sorry about the resolution, all right, but uh, it's a little description about why you would want to contribute at all. And then there's a long list at the bottom here. We edited this. Um, and actually put each task, because they were hidden under the parents mm -hmm. over there. So you can come here, and you can immediately scan the page, and you can be like, manual testing? That's a thing I can do? Like, you don't even know what the things you can do are that, that, that we value, right? This exposes those things on this page. And these links go to documents that say how to find issues to do this thing. This is great process here. So I'm not quite sure what, so what, I'm what saying you're saying is, is different than this. What I'm saying is when I click on the new contributor t task document for manual testing, the view should also be there. Ooh. Right? Like when you go to a web page in the modern world, you have different blocks <laughs> of contextually related information. So I should have a list of issues 
with the instructions for how to do the issues. But it, like it wouldn't you you wouldn't want to overwhelm the user with all of this information at once. You have like when you click on novice, you have like a little like teaser section that sort of introduces them. Like I want to try this thing, and then it can guide them through the process. Yeah, we'd have stuff. to craft. We'd have to think about that. I know. This so is, so that's another. So that's an issue. I, I would say it's an issue because we want to discuss it. So mm -hmm. it's not an issue like uh, like it's a bug that we have to file yeah, or no, we have to create the It's a meta views. issue, probably. I we could put it in with the uh, we could put it in with um, the Drupal mentoring on D.0, yeah. maybe core uh, mentoring issue on queue. D.0 is and yeah. it would be to on the individual contributor task document pages also include a preview of issues. That meet I, I would that actually criteria. put that around and, and say introduce a, a, a new interface that includes both instructions and issues. Introduce a one. new interface right. that includes the instructions and because issues. The handbook isn't where I go to find issues, um, but issues aren't where I find out how to do issues and I don't know there's no connection. Okay. And then the other thing you could also do if 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 you think about that model is like I am interested in multilingual takes you to whatever Reeves in. That, that's the kind of thing that we would have to wire up manually. There's no way to automatically do that. But if we could have a short list of those topics that for a core release cycle we identify and promote to some, some area on the dashboard. I am interested in, think about it, multilingual. Click on it, takes you to the, the page for multilingual issues that has the... Right. the and now, and now, and now we're at topic pages again because, yep. um, because these are things that need to be done for all, for all of those interest areas, right? It would be like multilingual is an interest area, right? And having a onboarding link yep. for each yep. interest area, which might not go to the same thing, might not always be a link to issues. It might not be a link to documentation. It could be a link to a complete another site, right? But there's some kind of thing mm -hmm. which groups, right? Every group is going to want to do, which is like how to get in, you know, so yeah, so can you restate that last thing again? What did I state? Uh, Oh, just I am interested in multilingual. I am interested in configuration. Oh, exposing and, yeah. the topics that you right. can be interested in. And but I think you know that that's something that. Well, both of these are like we need to curate the concepts. Yes. Um, but we can. That's the kind of thing that could easily go in a in a dashboard block. So that's there the, is so that's your so that's our third actionable thing would be to make a curated list of interest areas. And, and then use that somehow on the user, in the user like initial user landing page experience. Uh, the other thing that I said that's not really ac actionable, but like when you're talking about, I don't know what you want to do, it's like, well, no, I actually should. I, I want to say, like, oh, we should use Acquia Lift. Um, I, I, I work for Acquia, by the way. Did you see how I worked that in there? Okay. Um, t it tar targeting personalization and targeting for people based on. Their, their previous work on Drupal.org, that, that's not something that we're going to accomplish this year. I, I was mostly just joking. Um, <laughs> so, but then, so just the, the, the other two quick things. Um, so uh, Alex mm. actually- Hold on a second. Oh, sure. So um, uh, I do this thing, and Jess clearly also does this thing, which is when we think of things we want to share with the room, we write them down, please, y'all people standing in line or sitting there, please write your thoughts down, because I, I don't, I don't. I want to hear them, whether we get to them all in the talk or we hear them later. Please write them down. This is why I'm holding my laptop like an awesome person. Um, <laughs> so the the second thing, Alex leaned over and asked me when we were when you were demoing the the new insert novice tasks button that yes. Jennifer has for the table. He like leaned over and he said, "Well, why doesn't it automatically add the novice tag to the field?" And what I said was, "Ah, but it's not all novice, right?" But we don't see that's. But that inf okay, so there's a problem there, right? I'm going to say why I think it shouldn't be. But now go I'm going to, yes, frankly, it should be. I don't think so. Uh, but what we could do there is see, this is just terrible. This is the worst idea. But sometimes you have to, have to say the worst ideas, right? Um, so we have this template, and it says what to do. It says uncomment the things. What it should have in there, maybe, is have a link to where we explain what is novice and what isn't. Right that, in the template. Oh, that, that should be. We have a yes. great documentation novice should, page. should be a link to. Uh, no, something. inside the template. Right in the template. The, the thing the experienced we, yeah. person is using. What is it? Yeah. Should give them the idea. information they need That's to decide whether or not it should be novice, and then they can know whether how. Then they know when not to put novice. So the reason that I don't think it should add the tag automatically is that, I. And actually, the label of the button isn't quite right. It's insert tasks. Yeah, we didn't bike shed the label of the button. Yeah, I don't agree with it but either. But I. But the reason, the reason, um, is that there, 
there is a very strong advantage to having the same format of, a, of information on every single issue because that makes the issue scannable. So I, as someone who gets used to looking at issues a few times, knows that I can go to this shape on the page. There's this rectangle, this table. I always go there. It's very visible. It's under a header. There's, it's semantic. And I go there, and that's what it tells me what I need to do with the issue. And having that be the same for novices and non-novices teaches them how to work on issues. So we should be using it when we standardize on a format for telling people what the tasks are, the issues, it should be the same for novices and non-novices. And right now, the dreaded button is the best way we have of doing that. And so right. we, people should also use it on their issues that are not novices. Right. So this is super, I mean, that's, it's really good feedback, and it's also super important. So the way that you add screenshots to an issue is the same whether or not adding screenshots to the issue is novice or advanced. Some multilingual issues, the way to st step through the steps to reproduce to get to the page that you need to take a screenshot of are really hard to do, and I would not give an issue like that to a novice. But I will still put the link to the contribution doc for how to do it so that when an experienced person comes to the issue who may not you know, have put screenshots on the issue before or, you know, whatever, like, they can still discover the information. So it's definitely, it's like the same task, but some of them are hard. Some of them are easy, but it's still the same task. Yeah. My name is Kristen Pohl, and um, I just wanted to share a little bit about what happened on Monday, because we had sprints on Monday, and I we have three new people that are, this is their first DrupalCon, so. Three new people from Hook42. From my company, yeah. So I was like, okay, I need to find something for you guys. You know, we set up computers and stuff, and I was like, okay, I need to figure out what to give you guys. And I didn't know what to do. I, I was like, I know there's a novice issue link somewhere. And I was looking, I swear, I couldn't find it. I was looking and was like, I'm going to the homepage. I went to the Drupal you know, page. And I'm like, really? I mean, I can't find it. And I'm like, well, I'll just go to Gabor's site and I'll go and I know how to get it from there. And it was really just amazing that, I mean, I've fixed stuff myself and I've found issues myself, but I just felt so flustered that I couldn't just like, oh yeah, you just go here and it's, you know, so whatever. But I was, I would, so basically, yes, we need, <laughs> we need to, we need to fix it. I, and there's lots of great ideas of how to fix it. But, right. um, yeah. So even as somebody like experienced who's mentored before, yeah. right? Who's yeah. You know, it's it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Hi, I'm Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi. Um, so the question that I keep bubbling. So first of all, I want to agree with Jess that the idea that I mean, one of the things that bubbled up in the session that we were doing yesterday was the idea of being able to sort of define what you're interested in and then having Drupal.org and and GDO and all of these things sort of bubble that content up to you. Um, that's something that, you know, on the community tools team, so I'm the UX lead of the community tools team, um, for the record. But one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot is, you know, we have all this stuff that's sort of thrown at us. And how do we basically, like, say, this is the stuff I want. Um, but one of the things that I'm hearing in the conversation that, that just happened and has been having um, happening for the last couple of minutes is, you know, how do we define novice? What is a novice? So, uh, hold on a second. I think this is this would actually be okay to do. Hold on. What the heck is it called? <laughs> because, yeah. Okay, hold on. Here. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. This is how people. So core mentoring, right? Uh, here, watch this. Let's do this. Drupal, core. I'm gonna pretend it's not in my uh, browser cache. <laughs> mentoring. <laughs> That's how I find things. I just mm -hmm. they just they're all in my browser cache. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, there are some child pages down here. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we've been doing is trying to really organize some of this um, exclusive mentor knowledge and make it more just like knowledge that people need, you know, for Drupal.org. We've been moving it and reorganizing it. And this is the same thing like that we were talking about with the preparing for the sprints blog post that's so great. It's really like a redistillation of a lot of information that's had a lot of different uh, versions. And it's just, it, they're getting better crafted all the time. Mm -hmm. So what makes a good novice task is a good novice task has clear steps and is not open-ended. 
keeps the scope uh, specific. Uh, the person is able to understand the concepts. Um, <laughs> um, and then uh, what makes a bad novice issue? Uh, Rerolls of large patches, patches that touch a lot of files, issue summaries with too many comments or uh, emotional uh, histories or ones that have gone in too many different directions, upgrade path tests, issues to avoid, avoid urgent ones, long ones, contentious ones, those lacking consensus, reopened, derailed, or those that are shifting direction. So this is how we know what a novice, like novice issues, novice tasks, this is how we know what they are. So, so, and, and that's great, but what I'm trying to get at is one of the things that I heard in your talk was you said novice and then you said non-coder. And, well, but, but... Did but, I say the words non-coder? Because if uh, I you, did, I'm going to kick myself. Well, no, but, so, so, and, and... It's There's not, contributor it's who's not... not a, it's not a, con it's not a criticism, it's just, it's an observation. So, one of the things that when we think of the word novice, it, it I'm inexperienced. No, no, um, no, no, no. Right. So, uh, um, hold on a second. Please tell me. Please tell me. You know, it's in the blog post, but not on here. <laughs> there is. It's yeah. in the blog post, and the blog. I'm telling you, the blog post is fantastic. It, ex <laughs> it literally has a section that is who are novices, mm -hmm. and in it, it, ex it explains that novices are people who either mm -hmm. in their passion or their job. Are, have exceptional skill with what they do, and mm -hmm. what they are lacking is experience on Drupal.org issues. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't know how to do fantastic things. It's just they don't. They haven't worked on an issue before. Mm -hmm. And 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 I understand that. I just you know for for me the question that I always come up with is, well, I'm not necessarily a coder, but I could work on issues. And there are novice issues that require code, and novice is, novice issues that don't require code. Right. And how so, do I balance that? No, th those are not categories that we have. Mm -hmm. So what happens when a non-coder wants to contribute? No, so what you do, okay, let's say you come to the new contributor tasks, because mm -hmm. you're a new contributor. See, it doesn't say new coder. It doesn't say, right, new developer. Mm -hmm. It says new contributor. Mm -hmm. That's very broad. And then here we can find them. So okay. there are things like... Um, adding screenshots to a Drupal issue, mm -hmm. um, uh, triaging an issue, documenting steps to reproduce, uh, manually testing uh, accessibility, manually testing a patch, verifying an issue, um, and right. So, and then there are other things. Uh, you know, uh, things that. So these go to issues. Mm -hmm. that there's something to do on that you don't need to have all of the skills for. Like, for example, I can't do performance profiling, right? I, I can do other things, but I can't do that. So I know not to go look at that link. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that people, any contributor, can mm -hmm. come to this list and identify something that they see that they would be well-suited for. Mm -hmm. So if we're missing that from this list, we need to fix that. Okay. But the but these are not targeted to, to, I mean, they're on purpose, supposed to be inclusive, is what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. I, and, and, I'm, and the question is not, uh, I'm... Let's rephrase. Yes, let's, let's, let's rephrase. Let's take a moment. Um, it, it's more stepping back and thinking about what does the word novice mean? Like, that, that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's less about, like, are you guys being inclusive? Because I do believe that you are. But when we hear the word novice task, that means different things to different people. And so when I go to Drupal.org as a novice, right, you what might, does you, that mean You might me? think that you're not novice. Exactly. Exactly. But like I, I, but I know sites. that a novice issue is good for experts. You, you want to do one first, right? Mm-hmm. Experts want to do one novice issue first, mm -hmm. and then they go crazy. Yeah. And, and so, I, yeah, I don't know how to... Oh, yeah. Geez, and it, can you imagine changing the word novice? Yeah, well, and it's that would be a huge. That would be a huge yeah. cultural... Yeah, and, and it's kind of a large... And it's sort of one of those larger conversations, and I think what it comes down to is, like, even if you look on Drupal.org and you look at your dashboard, there's, what, 7,500 novice tasks or something last time I looked? So even that, like, there's a number. 
there's a huge number and how am I going to find the one thing that I can work on from that huge number so I don't think the problem is necessarily the word novice it's how do we explain what a novice issue is uh, like right there when you're in the moment of thinking about I want to work on an issue so yeah so I mean what we're talking about like this is all fantastic content but it's like over here where you need to look for it Right. And yes. No. Yes. This is it terrible. So, this is organ- so, it's disorganized, and it's in yeah, a lot so of different places. The question is sort of like it, you know, it comes down to how do I, as someone who has a couple of hours and wants to spend it doing contrib, how do I find the things? This is what I'm good at. These things, and then how do I find? Okay, so that's awesome. Here's issues related to that, and it's sort of like the experience, for example, that um, that I saw on Sunday where. Um, people were walking into the sprint. I happened to be in the middle of the aisle, and I saw people looking confused. And I said, oh, hi, are you looking for something to do? Let me introduce you to Kathy. And then you very sweetly said, okay, so what are you good at? What do you like doing? Okay, so there's this table over here. You should go talk to these people. Like, can we create, and this is sort of a bigger question, can we create that experience on Drupal.org? And I wonder where that goes. So I just wanted to like put that out there. That would be hilarious. <laughs> you know what would be like super super funny would be to like have like some student or something like follow me around and like write down how the interactions go and the words and stuff, and then try and figure out how to distill that into some kind of static existence of something. Dude, I need an assistant so bad. <laughs> Alina, Alina, that's awesome. Okay, we, okay, let's do that. Okay, next. Just, I'll try to be as quick as I can. Technically, I don't. Think we have, that, we have, uh, yes, we have three minutes, but that doesn't mean you. I'm not going anywhere. The okay. virtual Kathy is not as hard as it sounds, but we could you have to leverage Drupal and be a lot smarter about it. Yes, Micah has some issues that try and do of some issues. of these things. Yes, you do have a lot of issues. <laughs> but he has some that might actually have productive ideas in them also. And some that are bullshit. Yep. But that's okay. So, the, like, you're the one with the things on the side, right? Yeah. Like, this issue is in needs work. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that need to happen after needs work. Yes, so... Go ahead and say so, what you want to say. Uh, first of all, Jess, Kathy, thank you. Uh, yes, a lot of great ideas. It's really good to have this presentation as part of core conversations. First concern, there aren't a lot of people here, and why aren't there a lot of people here? I think that this is something where le- Drupal is driven by by the community. This is a critical issue where, the, where a community failing, and if our community is not able to grow and bring more people into the community in a scalable w- fashion, then we're not going to be able to to continue to go off and to to meet the demands of the of, of coding for Drupal.org. All of the effort is yeah. on the the code. None of the don't leave with those notes. <laughs> I'll send them to you. No, take a picture of them and tweet them at me before you leave the room, please. <laughs> um, give them to you or send them to you. Give them to Kristen. Nope. I appreciate you doing it very, very much, and I value it so much that I'm not willing to risk losing it. Thank you for taking those notes. Uh, so so I, I agree. Like Sometimes it can feel frustrating to feel really passionate about something like I feel, like you feel about this, and you look around the room, and the room isn't full. But I would disagree with maybe evaluating that there aren't a lot of people here. There are a lot more people here than I thought were going to be here, and... I will say the quality of people here is exceptionally good. We have people who are UX experts, community experts. We have some new people in the room okay, who can provide their perspective. We've got three minutes. I've got to talk. got to go over points. Quick, quick. Okay? Yes. Sorry, Kathy. Uh, D.O. contributions are very hard. As a core maintainer, I think it's harder to get changes in Drupal.org and to bring people up to speed with Drupal.org than it is in core. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's a, a major issue. There, and, but and we're working on that, though. And there's very little or no recognition of people who are giving their work to D.O. There's no reason for people to go off and to donate or contribute to D.O. because everyone's recognizing we're getting the s- core, core yes. maintainers. Yes, traditionally not- that, that might have been true. Um, I think one of the nice things, I, I keep saying this because I really think it, um, when the when the when This Week in Drupal Core started coming out, right, and... Um, we're starting as a community to realize that it is extremely important to recognize 
and celebrate when we do things, even when the list of things we need to do are quite large. We need to take time to recognize and celebrate these things. And this week in Drupal Core does that. It yeah. recognizes when things get done, and then it mentions a few little things that are coming up that we might want to be working on, right? Yeah. Um, Gabor does that too. To that as well, and please. D.O. is starting to do that also. And yeah. I think that's one way where where we're going to start seeing that kind of recognition come through. And, and, and need, it's, it's important. We, I think we need to do it. I think we're starting. We, we need to see progress on simple issues. Like there's some stupid simple issues on D.O. Like, you know, images on community pages. Like it's right. so trivial. It's, yeah, we and they're working really system. hard to try and make it easier for people to do it. They're continually improving the sandbox process. And it's not trying to slag the people who are in the Drupal Association. Okay, so wait, what's work. your, do you have a, like, a, um, like a recommendation? Like what do you want, what's your idea? The, the recommendation is that, uh, we'll go out of the way, cause you, uh, but I've talked for a while, uh, is that we, we have to start treating D.O issues at a different level or a different kind of way. We have to treat it differently than we do core API changes. But right now we're dealing with the same attitude with, well, that, that, that they it's it's like with images on the contributing on the uh, community pages that should be changed every few months it should be easy to get new images up there it should be a simple process somebody goes oh wait okay so let me think let me think there. so there's a, there's a couple of different some d.o issues are really hard and they're going to take like six months a year three months to do and some of them so are easy wins yeah. so i think i've heard the um the so i'm on the drupal software working group one of the governance groups and so i i get to like over here, people talk about things more than I used to. And I have heard them say that they are planning on allocating their time, specifically splitting it between super hard issues and easy wins. Great. So we're going to start seeing more of those easy wins come through, which will keep up our morale, which will support yeah. getting new people involved because new people can work on those, which yeah. will get reviewed by the experienced people because some of their time, they will be on purpose spending on those easy wins. So I think you're going to like that. Yes. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Sure. Say your name, please. Hi, my name is Sean Morris. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, you mentioned earlier that this kind of issue management would be difficult to apply to other open source projects, and that if you try to promote that, that this project might even not, uh, that this me methodology might not work. Uh, what would be the roadblocks in doing something like that? Um, can you restate that? Yeah, earlier you said that um, at this type of, it, if you were to ask other people to restructure their projects, to fit this issue management model, then it wouldn't uh, be easy for them at all, and that this might not survive. Why? Oh, okay. So one of the ideas. So the needs. We have these needs tags. We have needs tags, and we have these contributor task documents. So core has what's called core gates, and issues are not supposed to be committed unless they meet some minimum standards. And the minimum standards include uh, documentation, uh, accessibility, um, performance, usability. usability, and testing. Thank oh, you. So the roadblocks are human. So than we, so they actually like core issues can hmm? should not be. We would like them not to be committed unless they meet those things. Uh, and so we've kind of established these things that they need to be done, and these are certain things that need to be done. Contrib um. projects, contrib maintainers can establish their own criteria. They may have additional needs ones, or they may not have these same needs. Um, they could have more stringent, less stringent, different ones. And so to give them this, you know, from on high prescription about how they need to run their issue queue is very heavy handed and not compassionate or understanding to what those um, maintainers of contrib projects. So contrib projects within Drupal, yeah, right? Um, so some little projects are, you know, hobbyists. Some are ones that shops run for their own usage. Um, maintain it mostly for that, but they put them up there. Other ones are used by tons of people, like the rules module is used by a lot of people, right? So they're all going to have these different criteria, and they're not going to be the same as the core gates. So that's what I mean. I don't mean that this wouldn't be useful for contrib. I mean, we can't, we can't make it exactly like we want for core and then make all the contrib people use it. I think in order to make it useful for contrib, it has to be configurable per con uh, per project so that the maintainer of that project can say these are our contributor task documents these are our needs tags these are our needs 
you know, concepts. And then the idea of doing this and having it automatically go in the issue summaries and having it, you know, revealed what needs to be done, that's useful across contrib. But the specifics aren't. And to prescribe a particular workflow for a different project, it's rude. Yeah. And I don't want to be rude. That does make a lot of sense. Thank you. So I'm sorry. I, I, I think I meant to come back to that during it, and I just forgot. So I'm really yeah, glad you waiting. asked that. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Irina Zaks. I'm Drupal developer and themer and trainer and community person. And for many years, I tried to make contribution to Drupal.org, and I faced all these issues. And I think that the biggest part that is lacking here is treating people who come to Drupal.org to contribute as your standard users. I don't think the user experience of these people is being considered by those who build Drupal.org. We all deliver websites to our customers, and I don't think anybody will deliver website with this kind of navigation flow, usability, or anything. Yes, it's I'll embarrassing. I think it's very embarrassing. I'll be happy to donate my time as a person who does like systems, like websites, designs, theming. I'll be happy to donate my time during this Drupal con or at any other time to create quick wireframes that would say, this is your landing page, right. select, novice, this, this. This is things that I need in the right toolbar. This is what I need in the middle. Please don't put 157 comments. Yes, right. So I, my, I can give my Drupal name, and I know. Yes, we should, um, we should like, um, we should tweet at each other, or you know, write things down or something. I don't tweet. Uh, then. I use IRC and email. Good IRC. Yes, please say hi to me in IRC. Leave me a tell. That is, that would be the most excellent. It's fine. You don't have to tweet at me, but leave me a tell. Now, so let me. I think in the past, we have in general. Since the past, we have changed the way that we view new contributors uh, as incredibly valuable, not only as a source of people who can do work, but also um, because they have a perspective that we lack. Uh, and the problem with ch making changes to Drupal.org is we weren't allowed to make them. There were many reasons. We couldn't. We, we just couldn't. And those have been remedied. Uh, in part or fully, and things are getting a lot, lot better. But during the time with which we couldn't change things as much as we wanted, we came up with a lot of good ideas about how things should be. We had the Prairie Initiative, we had usability studies, we had past things we can go back and learn from, and we have a, a new, uh, fresh reevaluation happening right now. There are people being interviewed at the con, right? Yes? Uh, Yes, there are people being interviewed now at the con about how they use Drupal.org so we can see how they use it, about how they want to use it. And, and so we are doing those things. And I, I'm, I tell you, it's going to get a lot better, a lot faster. People are understand that when you give money to the Drupal Association, they can do good things with it now. They can do really good things with it now. And, th and fixing this is something they can do. Hi, Alex Pot. Um, just want to make a quick point is that we, we seem to be saying that we've got a big problem here and whilst it's great that we address the problem we're not celebrating our success Drupal <laughs> 8 has over 2,000 contributors that's more than any other version of Drupal okay so yes you're absolutely right we onboard new people really well we are good at getting like if you come to office hours you will contribute to Drupal right you come to a sprint you will contribute to Drupal Right. So we, we're doing it. I just don't like the way we're doing it. It's intensive in part on me. <laughs> <laughs> Says the person who used to do this. So, I mean, so that's why, like, I'm selfishly talking to people about this in part to relieve some of that. So we are doing a great job at it, right? But I think it could be it could it could be better we could enable more people to help other people by making some changes. I 
Yes. We, we so I, to, yeah, thank you. We have to find s ideas that scale, right? We have to find things that you don't scale. We'd love you to scale, but you don't. Right so now we're scaling with humans. I scale. We have, yeah. like, we're going to have, like, 75 mentors, right? And we're scaling, but we're scaling without using technology. We should use technology. I mean, we should also websites. have humans involved. Like, yeah, yeah. I like humans. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they, they add value. <laughs> humans add value to the interaction. But we are, um, we can change the proportion with which we rely on humans versus rely on technology to make the experience that those humans have better. Also, to Kathy's point, when, when she talks about scaling humans, and we have, is it 75 for Austin? That's awesome. I, I haven't counted. So that, anyways, almost for me, that's the real sustainability problem is taking that, that manual, taking the manual labor out of being a mentor and turning it into something that you can do that's interacting with people and sharing what you love with them instead of it being a, a you have to teach them a, a process for using a website. That, yes. I think, is that. Yeah, we want to have interactions with each other. They are really valuable. And it's one of the great things I think people enjoy about it. And I don't necessarily think that fixing this would reduce the interactions we have with each other, but it would reduce how we interact with each other. So we wouldn't have to be interacting on all of this. We could be interacting on actually doing the thing that is the contribution instead of interacting about how you find what to contribute about. So I think, like, you know, it's complicated. Lucas. Hi. Hey, you got my name right. I will never, ever, ever get it wrong again. I'm so, yes, but I didn't remember either earlier. I'm so sorry. So, um, yeah, I mean, just to, to follow on with Jess there, it, it's, it's really hard to find stuff. I went to the session today, and I've been mentoring now for what seems like a year because it's been about a year. Yeah. And, and we had all these people in there that we're going to help out on Friday, and we're going to get them up to speed, and, 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 and it was deer in the headlights. 25 people in this room and sort of like filter out and and, and 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 it was not so bad as that but i felt like i felt their pain these are all folks that want to help but they're not really sure how to find novice tickets themselves and they've been contributing to core in theory for a while because now they're going to be mentoring people yeah um it's it's not easy for them and and then after an hour um you know we had people leave and and They'd done one ticket where they picked it up, and they said, okay, I'll try to look through it and see if I can get this one ticket.